The East Belfast Circuit Worship Night in Knock. If any of you have said before, if any of you haven't been to them, certainly worth your while going. It's a very lively evening and it's a great night of uh, praise and worship. So that's Sunday the 26th, 7pm in Knock. The Advent Community Services in around East Belfast, again, they're on the screen there. So we have Daniel Church at uh, 12.30pm on Thursday the 30th of November, Thursday the 7th of December, Thursday the 14th of December and, and Thursday the 21st of December. That's in Branwell Church at 12.30pm. We have Blue Christmas Services at Sydenham on the 3rd of December. It's a very small print. You probably better read it off that. 3rd of December at Sydenham, the 10th of December at uh, Knock and the 10th of December also at Mount Pottinger if you'd like to attend those. And I had an announcement a few weeks ago, again in Knock, on Sunday the 2nd of December, I'm writing Sands of Christmas Fair in Stall. Saturday, yeah. So you're very welcome if you want to attend along on Saturday the 2nd of December. And we mentioned last week as well, the Christmas Tree Festival in East Belfast Mission starts on Thursday the 30th through to Sunday the 3rd of December, if you'd like to go along there. And uh, thankfully that's all the announcements this morning. We'll hand over to Fiona. Thank you. Thanks, Michael. Good morning, everyone. It is lovely to be here with you. Um, the idea of the circuit pulpit exchange is so that you can get to know the ministers on the circuit and so that we can get to know you. So all the stories that Alan's told me, I now I get to work out if they're true or not, basically. It is really nice to be here. I've been at the worship services here, um, the praise nights, um, and at some circuit service as well. But it's actually lovely to be in the pulpit and chatting to everybody. Um, this is Home Mission Sunday, so as you know, all of our ministers are moving around the circuit and in different churches. Um, but we want to really focus on the work of the Methodist Church throughout Ireland. Um, so we're going to be using the resources produced by MCI this morning, and it'll give you a hint of what's going on around the place. Um, I know there is lots going on here in Glenburn, even just hearing your announcements. Um, there's loads of mission going on in this place. But today's service is to broaden our eyes a little uh, beyond our own church, into our circuit, but also into the whole island of Ireland at what God is doing there. So it is really lovely to be with you. I bring you greetings from Knock. Everybody in Knock uh, says hello this morning. I laughed when Michael said, dear, love them, I think. Well, we'll just, you can decide after this. I think they may have got the better end of the stick, uh, having Alan to bless them this morning. Let me read you some words from the Psalms as we begin. We give thanks to you, Lord our God. With our whole hearts, we praise you. We bow before you, thankful for your love and faithfulness. When we call, you answer. You strengthen our soul strengthen us today. Amen. Kim and the All Age Worship Group are going to lead us in our praise. Thank you.
I love that second song. That's a new one to me, and I'll definitely be looking that up when I go home. What a great message to lean hard on the everlasting arms. So our our home mission Sunday theme is to grow together and go together. So we're going to hear stories from across the island, and we're going to reflect on the call of the first disciples in Luke chapter 5. We're going to explore what it means to grow together as followers of Jesus and how to support one another in our growth. And then how once we've grown, we want to go out and we want to go on mission to the places that we find ourselves during the week. That's where we're navigating uh, this morning in our worship. Let's uh, bring our worship to God in prayer as we begin. Father God, we just thank you for the words of that hymn, uh, Lean. Lord, we want to lean on you today for everything uh, that we need. Not everything we want, but everything we need. Present God, God with us, we gather in this place in confident trust. We know that you are here. You are the God who is always near, always at work for good. You are awesome and great, a God of the possible. So present God, receive our praise this morning. You are an enriching God. We gather in this place in confident readiness, knowing that you will speak. Into our receptive hearts and minds, pour out your spirit. Reshape and refashion us for your kingdom's sake. Enriching God, we wait on you. And God, you are a moving God. We gather in this place in confident expectation, knowing that you are at work. You are moving across this whole island, transforming lives and drawing people to yourself. And you invite us to move with you. So give us courage, we pray, moving God. Help us to follow in your steps. We ask all this in the name of Jesus and we pray together the prayer he taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Okay, boys and girls, I said, do they come up to the front? And somebody said, no, you're too scary. So I'm just going to talk to you from here, okay? And I understand that. Okay, put up your hand if you've ever been fishing. Oh, not a big fishing congregation. Okay, a few people. Okay. Okay. Well, actually, lots of people do go fishing. Um, Apparently, they find it relaxing and enjoyable. If you've been fishing, was it relaxing and enjoyable? Yeah? Okay. I was bored solid, but anyway. Okay, that's good that you find it relaxing. But there's actually people who don't just do it as a hobby. Some people fish for work, and they go out often on huge trawler boats, and they catch many, many fish that are then sold for people to eat. Who likes to eat fish? Ah, there's a bigger population. Okay, okay, you're happy to eat them. Well, fishing was a job that you read lots about in the Bible. In fact, some of the first disciples who first followed Jesus actually started their lives as fishermen. And fishing would have been how they provided for their family. They would have fished using big, huge nets. So a bit different to maybe your line that I'm guessing you use. Um, more like the nets on trawler boats, so huge nets that they put down into the sea and caught lots of fish that they could sell them. So I want you to tell me what we might need for fishing. Okay, the the slide's up, so it's like a cheat fest here. Um, Okay, so if you don't get this right, there's a serious issue. Okay, what are you going to need for fishing? A fishing rod, yep. Yep, somebody over here? A net, yep, absolutely. Anything else? Yep. Bait, brilliant. 
Anything else? Yep. A heck fantastic. I don't actually know if you need anything else. A lot of time in your hands, but anyway. Okay. So, the first item... You guys on the back are on the ball. Okay. First item is a fishing rod. So you need something to catch the fish with. So it could either be a rod or a net, as you so rightly said. Okay. Next one. You need bait. This guy looks happy. He has no idea what's about to happen to him. Okay. But you need something to attract the fish. Some sort of bait. So like, usually it's like worms and Really? People do this for fun. Okay, so you put a worm on the hook. Um, somebody had said hook earlier. Um, or I think you can get like plastic ones, which sounds so much nicer to me. But anyway, it draws the fish towards the rod. Okay, and the last one, this is where I failed miserably. You need patience. You need to be ready to wait because fishing, in my experience, is not a fast activity. There's a lot of waiting. There's a lot of shh. Be quiet. Stillness. Waiting for the fish to come. So I think that's kind of where I fell down flat. But in one story that we read in the Gospel of Luke in the New Testament, Jesus is inviting the disciples to come and follow him. And he says to them that from this point on, they're not going to fish for fish anymore. They are going to fish for people. Let's have the next slide, please. And it might sound strange um, to say that, fish for people. But for the disciples, it meant that Jesus was inviting them to come with him and to tell people the good news about Jesus. The good news that they were loved and they were welcomed into the family of God. And this call to the disciples is exactly the same as the call to us now. Because we are still invited by God to be fishers of people to tell people the good news about the love of God. And this is what the verse says, Do not be afraid. From now on, you will be catching people. And I'm sure for the disciples, it was a bit fearful to give up their livelihood, to give up the the thing that brought them money and to help support their family and to go and follow Jesus. But as we read in scripture, that's exactly what they did. And so we are to be just like them, a bit like the fishing rod or the net. We are to be ready to be used to spread the good news of Jesus. We already have the bait, and that is the wonderful news of Jesus that tells everybody that they're loved and welcome into the family of God. And the third thing we need, just like fishermen, is patience. Because spreading the good news of Jesus doesn't happen overnight. It takes patience. We need to be ready to wait and to keep going, never giving up, even if we don't see results in what we're doing. Spreading the good news and the love of Jesus is every single follower of Jesus' job. It's not just for a select few. No matter how young or how old we are, it's a job for every single one of us to be fishers of people. And all it takes is a bit of courage a lot of love as Jesus showed us and the ability to come alongside others and to share what we know is true. Let's pray together. Father God, we we really want to hear your call and we really want to answer. Will you help us to share your love with others? Help us to tell people that you do love them and it's a love that will last forever and that they are welcomed into your family. Father, use us to be your fishers of people, we pray. In the name of Jesus. Amen. We are going to stand and sing a great song that talks all about this. Will you come and follow me if I call your name? So let's stand together.
your offering for God's work will be received. Jean McCartney is going to read to us our scripture. Our reading this morning is taken from St. Luke, chapter 5, verses 1 to 11. Jesus calls his first disciples. One day, as Jesus was standing by the lake of Gennesaret, the people were crowding around him and listening to the word of God. He saw at the water's edge two boats left there by the fishermen who were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to move out a little from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the people from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, pull out into the deep water and let down the nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything. But because you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them, and they came and filled both boats so full that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' knees and said, Go away from me, Lord, I am a sinful man. For he and all his companions were astonished at the catch of fish they had taken, and so were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, Simon's partners. Then Jesus said to Simon, Don't be afraid. From now on, you will fish for people. So they pulled their boats up on shore, left everything, and followed him. This is the end of the reading taken from the word of God. Thank you, Jean. We're now going to watch a video produced by Home Missions um, that will tell us a little of what is going on with mission around our island of Ireland. Then Jesus said to Simon, Don't be afraid. From now on you will fish for people. 
So they pulled their boats up on shore, left everything and followed him. Each year, the Methodist Church in Ireland sets aside Home Mission Sunday to focus on local mission and to raise money to support mission initiatives throughout Ireland. On Home Mission Sunday, stories are told of Methodists across the island who respond to the invitation of Jesus to follow him and to serve God in mission, whether that be in the ordinary of everyday life or in pioneering new forms of mission and creating new Christian community. In the first part of this video, we'll hear from leaders and members of the Urban Junction community in Black Rock, County Dublin, a church that around 20 years ago made the decision to close its Sunday service and reopen as a Christian night base for young people. Today, it is a growing, vibrant Christian community of all ages seeking to share the love of Jesus with Black Rock and beyond. Welcome to Urban Junction. We're a church and community project. We're in the Methodist Church building, which is in Black Rock in South Dublin, and we've been here for nearly 25 years. I'm Belinda. I lead our church community here that we call Ignite, alongside a team of three others. We're all part-time employed lay workers, and we all have other jobs alongside, working here between one and three days a week. We have a volunteer intern too. It's great to having this kind of team because with each other, we come with different gifts and personalities for creativity and connecting with people in the community. The first mission activity we started here was a disco called Banks, and that's how I got involved as a teenager. We don't run the disco anymore, but mission continues to be our driving force. Our primary focus is to encourage each other to be Jesus' hands and feet every day of the week. Being there for people wherever he has us, in our workplaces, in our homes, in our communities. And so for us, mission and relationships, they come first. And then it's our activities that we do, including how we gather on a Sunday. They're shaped around those relationships. Hi, I'm Michael. I help to lead Ignite here. And uh, I first came down to Black Rock actually in 2003 on a year out team with the Methodist Church. We see the role of our church as helping people to become followers of Jesus for themselves. We therefore encourage people to discuss what they hear and to wrestle with it rather than simply accepting or ignoring what is taught. It is their responsibility to work out their salvation in fear and trembling, not ours. Our responsibility as a church is to walk alongside each other, to support each other. Here we can belong before we believe. Uh, it doesn't matter where your faith is or what your background is. Everyone is invited to belong and importantly to take part. So we started a community cafe once a month. Uh, approximately a quarter of our church community helped to run it instead of our regular Sunday service. The idea is to expand our vision of what Sunday gatherings can look like and be challenged in our faith together as we step into something perhaps outside our comfort zone. As leaders, we feel it's important to be adaptable in the ways that we communicate and in how we help others to grow as followers of Jesus. We have grown together through practices like prayer, some worship, Bible reading, reflection, communion. I felt it was a place where you're deeply loved and welcomed and also a place where you're challenged to live out your faith confidently in the everyday. Overall, I would say that we help each other to be more like Jesus by showing genuine love to each other. It's so open and welcome when I arrived in. There's different activities that are done. We have a talls and smalls group, which is mums and toddlers, dads, grandparents, childminders. One particular girl had an issue that she found her, that whom she was minding was really upset many, many times. And I used to come along and try and support her, lessen the burden a little bit at the playtime. And she was always saying, thank you, Norma, thank you, Norma. And so one day I said, thank you, Jesus. We say thanks to Jesus. And in that moment, you know, since she's come and whenever I interact anywhere with anyone else, she will actually say, thank you, Jesus. So great opportunity to bring Jesus into the community, into the group. We were able to start a men's shed in Black Rock in Urban Junction. It's now a, a great place for guys to come and get involved. This space is always people sitting, chatting, uh, chipping away or hammering. Our numbers over the last two, three years have grown each, each year. You can see when they're leaving to go home that they're, they feel fulfilled, they've done something or they've 
mess and chatter. Recently, a, a young adult uh, let us know that they had been looking for a church just like this and then found it, a home uh, here in Ignite. And for me, this is heartening because over the years, Ignite has been a home to me, a place where I know I can walk in the door and I'll be accepted and I'll find belonging. And it's heartening to know that this has become a place like that for other people too. In 2021, the Methodist Church in Ireland adopted the vision statement, living wholeheartedly as followers of Jesus for the transformation of the world. The first disciples left everything and set out on a journey with Jesus. This small group of people spent time in his company, going with him and growing together with him, as he brought life and healing to those that they encountered in villages and towns along the way. As Methodists in Ireland, it is important to us that we help each other to be more like Jesus. We grow together and are sent out as followers of Jesus in everyday life. Now let's hear stories from Methodists in all four corners of the island about what this looks like for them. We help each other to be more like Jesus by encouraging one another and sharing examples of where Jesus um, stepped in the situations and how we should follow his example. Uh, one of the things I love uh, sharing with people is actually how Jesus uh, met, pe met people where they were at. He, he didn't expect people to come in, but he went to where they were and met them where they're at. And we've been encouraging each other in the past while to go and meet people where they're at and see where God is working in the community around us. Several ways we grow together as followers of Jesus are weekly interdenominational Bible studies, uh, mostly a uh, co community praise night. Uh, multicultural and uh, multi-generational worship service, a uh, parish-wide messaging communication system, and global outreach relationship. Our purpose to know God and make Him known. One of the ways that we have been growing in love and fellowship with God and with each other over the last year is taking up the challenge that Hope Missions gave us to do 50 days of prayer. Uh, was we held special prayer meetings and gatherings throughout those 50 days, but we also used our church WhatsApp group to put on a different prayer every morning. That became a real practice for our church where more people stepped in to help lead the prayer and where our congregation, our church community was able to pray together every day with the prayers of each other. And we got to September after the 50 days was over and what is one of the things that the circuit executive decided, let's keep the prayer going. We continue to pray as a community through a church WhatsApp group where volunteers will provide the prayer every single day. It's a habit, it's commitment, and it's prayer. One of the ways that we grow together as followers of Jesus is by advocating for those who are experiencing injustices in our society through mutuality, charity, and solidarity with and for them. We must comfort those who are disturbed and disturb those who are comfortable in our society and ask for help through God's holy intervention and provision. We step out in mission together by serving our homeless community in the Bray area, by serving food, offering clothing, offering love, and also offering and listening ear, sharing God's love by bringing his kingdom close to those who are normally unloved, lost and forgotten by others. We step out of mission together by serving, um, particularly with youth and children, uh, people of all different ages, uh, older, younger, uh, work together who show God's love to our youth and our children um, and our example um, and join together to show them all that Jesus can offer them and the love that he has for them. We step out in mission together by setting up a safe place for asylum seekers to meet at White Alby Welcome. We offer friendship, conversation, English classes and some basic foodstuffs to take away each week. Some have been helped to get employment locally and quite a few have been given refurbished bicycles which has helped them to get to class and to their places of employment. 
So we step out in mission together by being really intentional and opening up our church building and running free community events, uh, particularly around key times of the year, such as harvest and Christmas and Easter. Come follow me and I will send you out to fish for people. The first disciples accepted the invitation to follow Jesus. This invitation remains the same for his followers today. Who will you grow with? Who will you go with? Then Jesus said to Simon, Don't be afraid. From now on you will fish for people. So they pulled their boats up on shore, left everything and followed him. Let's pray together. God, we gather together in your presence with expectation, hungry for an encounter with you and eager to hear your word. Open our eyes and ears to your Holy Spirit. May the seeds of your word scattered among us this morning fall on fertile soil. Amen. So there's lots to think about in that video, um, but the theme throughout is who do we grow with and who do we go with? I wanted to tell you the story of a man by the name of Larry Walters. He was 33 years old and he decided he wanted to see his neighbourhood from a new perspective. So he went down to a local army surplus store and bought 45 used weather balloons. And that afternoon he strapped himself into a deck chair to which several of his friends tied the helium filled used weather balloons. And he took with them something to drink, a sandwich and a BB gun figuring that he could shoot the balloons one at a time when he was ready to land. Now Larry assumed the balloons would lift him about 100 feet in the air, so he was a little caught off guard when his chair soared more than 11,000 feet into the sky. And it is a true story. He ended up smack in the middle of the air traffic pattern of Los Angeles International Airport. Now, understandably, at 11,000 feet, he was a little too frightened to shoot any of the balloons, and so he stayed in the air for more than two hours. The airport was forced to shut down its runways for much of the afternoon. Now, he did eventually safely be grounded and was then sighted by the police, and reporters asked him three questions. Were you scared? Yes, he said. Would you do it again? No, never, he said. And why did you do it? And I love his answer. Because you can't just sit there. Because you can't just sit there. I love that story. I love it because I think it's hilarious. I think it's something that one of my children would try at home. But also... Isn't it so often that we get stuck as Christians and we're not called to just sit there. We're not called to sit in our pews or in our comfortable Christian bubble and stagnate. We're called to continually be on the move, to grow together as followers of Jesus and to go in mission to the places that we find ourselves. We read earlier from Luke's Gospel, which is a really well-known passage. And it records a significant moment in the lives of Simon Peter, James and John. They've been going about their business, having a, a difficult and unfruitful time of fishing. And they're packing up their nets when Jesus enters the picture. He makes that request to go out on their boat a little from the shore. I can imagine what Simon Peter, tired, might have felt like. I imagine he might have huffed and puffed a little, but he did as was requested of him, not knowing the significance of that request from Jesus. Because what was about to take place was potentially the most successful day of Simon Peter's career, but also potentially the last day of his fishing career. What we see in that passage is Jesus coming alongside everyday ordinary people and inviting them to come and follow him. His entrance into their lives calls for change. It calls for it to be part of something more in spreading the gospel of Christ. Because you can't just sit there. 
I wonder if Simon Peter knew the gravity of what lay ahead, would he have hesitated? Or was there simply something in the presence of Jesus that evoked a sense of courage and determination, that he was willing to leave behind all that he had and follow him? And we know what happens in the end of the story. We know these disciples. We know that they continued to follow Jesus. They journeyed with him. They grew in faith and knowledge. They watched carefully what Jesus did. We also know that after the death and resurrection of Christ, these disciples went on to be leaders in the early church. They devoted their whole lives to the cause of Christ. These ordinary fishermen became leaders. These everyday followers became the church. The love of Christ so took over their whole lives that our lives remain impacted by their stories today. So how might we dwell on this passage ourselves today to challenge our hearts on the call of Christ that is before every single one of us? How do we make sure that we don't just sit there? Part of that comes down to growth. In this passage, these ordinary fishermen knew little about what the kingdom of God would really be like. It's doubtful that they imagined themselves as spiritual leaders or that they would have believed that they would be used by God to change the world. But their journey with Christ transformed their lives. They grew as individuals, but maybe more importantly, they grew as community. Together, they spent time in the company of Jesus. They were attentive to his teachings. They worked together to grow in their skills and knowledge. And in this passage in Luke, we see that these three men were already in the practice of working together. As Simon tries to haul the large catch of fish, it tells us that he signalled for his partners and they came to help with the work. Even before they are called by Jesus, they are used to working in community. But from that point on, the community changes in focus and the community grows. It's not just the fishermen that they are now in company with, but a collection of people with a diversity of skills and potentially opinions too. Yet despite difference, they were united in Christ. United, they grew from strength to strength because they had a common goal, and that was to follow Jesus. Community is so important as we journey in faith. It's the community around us that should encourage and support and keep us accountable for following the ways of Christ. This community of disciples were united with this call to come and fish for people. That was their common goal and their purpose from that point on. This direction from Jesus drew them together. And there is a real insight in this for us to hear today. You are all part of a community of faith here in Glenburn. It was so lovely as I stood in the foyer, hearing you come in and chatter and talk and ask about each other's week. That is community. You already have that in this place. And your purpose as a community should be united in the very same purpose as the early disciples, to grow together and to make Christ known. You are fishers of people in this place. We are fishers of people in this circuit. To live out that purpose well, we do need one another. Just like the disciples, we find ourselves in a community that is full of diversity, of different skills and opinions, but the call of Christ unites us and creates beauty from our difference. The desire to make Christ known and exercise love in his name is what unites us. As we think about mission today, I want us to think about who are the community around you? Who are the community that you are in mission with? And for all of us, that might be different. 
So for you, the obvious community is around us here in Glenburn. But also the community around you is your family, your friendship circles, those you interact with during the week, whether that be at work or in your retirement. Is there a sense that you're united with the same purpose in those places? Willing to encourage and build one another up in the ways of God. Strengthening the community here so that you can grow as followers of Christ will make a difference in how you go out as missionaries in the places you find yourselves. What we see in the the story of disciples is that courage and obedience to follow. They set down their nets and off they go to follow Jesus, leaving everything behind. And I think that's a huge challenge for each one of us because we're all invited to think about whether we have the same focus or priority to the calling of Christ in our lives. As we follow the story of the disciples, We know that Jesus sends them out to continue to spread the good news that the Saviour has come. This sending out was part of their nature as a community of believers. They weren't called to keep the good news of Jesus all to themselves. They were to share so that others would find out. And those disciples were obedient. They were focused on this pursuit. And we read that the early church grew in astounding ways because the good news of Christ captivated and inflamed hearts. Our church, the Methodist Church in Ireland, is not a selective church. It's open to all. It's to be ruled by an extravagant love of God that would keep loving and calling people to love. The church, the people of God, were never meant to simply sit there. We're meant to grow together and we're meant to go together and we're meant to invite others into the kingdom. We, as the people of God, are called to reflect Christ in how we live and love so that others might come to know him and be transformed. And so Christ calls us still to go, to go into our families, our workplaces, our neighbourhoods, to reflect his love to people who really need to know him. And part of that is an individual responsibility because you will have individual people that you know that others won't. But it's also a responsibility on us as a community that together, Glenburn Church is known as a place that is loving and welcoming. We live in a culture that is filled with struggles and stresses where people seek validation from all the wrong places where greed and power have eroded kindness and compassion. And people around us are searching, searching for identity, searching for belonging. And we have the answer. We hold that truth. We hold the truth of a God who loves, who calls, who restores, who redeems, who heals. We have the best news ever. And we cannot stay quiet. People need this good news. How are we going to tell them about it? The two questions that the Home Mission video left us with were who are you growing with? And who are you going with? We're going to watch a little video now and I want you to consider those two questions for you as individuals and as a community in Glenburn as you watch the video. Thanks. Yes, it is. Thank you. I woke up this morning, saw a world full of trouble now. I thought, how do we ever get so far down? And how's it ever going to turn around? So I turned my eyes to heaven. God, why don't you do something? Well, I just couldn't bear the thought of people living in poverty and children sold into slavery. The thought disgusted me, so I shook my fist at heaven. I said, God, why don't you do something? He 
Father God, it's time for us to do something um, because we just can't sit there. Father God, thank you for the amazing work that already goes on in this place of Glenburn, in this uh, circuit of Belfast East and in our island of Ireland. Father God, may you encourage us to continue to grow together and to continue to go together. May we recognise your call to be fishers of people, that that call is for each and every one of us today. Amen. Rosemary is going to come and share in our prayers of intercession. Let us pray. <clears throat> Dear God, as we come before you to intercede for others, we first acknowledge and give thanks for your goodness and love. You surround us every day with reminders of your presence that invite us to put our trust in you. You are so evidently at work in this world, and for that we give you all our praise. Guide us by your spirit that we would walk in your ways with a wholehearted devotion to Christ. <clears throat> give us courage as we follow, and may our actions be marked by love. Grant us joy overflowing as we see your transformation in this world. We pray this morning for those within our connection who are stepping out in pioneer ministries. We pray for the Boardwalk Collective North Coast, 
in their ministry focused on helping children, youth and young adults find hope and life in Jesus through the fun and adventure of outdoor boarding activities. We pray for their staff team, Chris Agnew, Matthew Beggs, Ken McRae, Lewis McKelvey and Jade Rule. Guide and direct them as they lead and encourage faith in others. We pray for pioneer mission leaders Chris and Hannah Agnew as they lead Coastal, a new church community in Portrush, seeking to be a missional presence in the area. We pray for Breathe, the small group of people in South Dublin who are seeking to bless and shape their community through everyday faith living. We pray for their leaders, Anne Benziger and Catherine O'Mahony. Give them wisdom and patience as they seek you in that area. We pray for David and Jill Hines, who have been working in the Ballinafai Circuit, South Belfast, to develop a long-term mission strategy based around prayer and hospitality to the least, the last and the lost. Continue to direct them as they build relationships with local people. We pray for the Belfast City Centre Chaplaincy, who are seeking to provide pastoral care for those working, living and relaxing in Belfast City Centre. Bless their volunteers who faithfully serve and seek to extend your kingdom to the lives of those in Belfast. We pray for Play It By Ear as they use their gifts of drama to engage with all ages. Bless Chris Neelands and Ross Jonas as they step into churches, youth groups and schools to teach and share about you. We pray for Neil Curran, a pioneer mission leader serving with Braniel Church in Belfast. We pray for Bias Braniel, a brand new community hub on the church site that will be used for community engagement projects that better support the community and in turn give opportunities to share the good news of Jesus. We pray for Reverend Stephen Foster, serving in County Galway as he builds relationships and seeks a new expression of Christian community in East County Galway. As relationships are built, help, help him see what God <coughs> is doing. Lead them by your spirit, equip them to serve, and overflow in them with love. Use them to share the good news of Christ in ways that will call others into relationship with you. As we pray for each of these people involved in mission on this island, we also pray for ourselves. Guide us to the people around us that you are calling us to love. Equip and sustain us with courage to do as you are calling us to do. Resource us with all that we need to journey well with others. Enlarge our vision, expand our dreams and unite our hearts as we seek to love and serve you. Make us wholehearted followers of Jesus for the transformation of the world. In the name of Christ. Amen. Thank you, Rosemary. We're going to stand and sing our closing hymn, Yet Not I, But Through Christ in Me.
And as you go, um, you will have been given a home missions offering envelope. Uh, please bring those back next week for the work of home missions in Ireland. And you'll also get a response sheet on the way out just to help you think through how are you going to grow together and how are you going to go together. Let's turn to one another and share the words of the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore.